Hi guys, MyGrew here. This is my video on the 24 hour challenge that I set myself. I set myself a goal of 200 million GP to make from scratch in 24 hours in one sitting. So let's find out how much GP I can make in 24 hours doing a range of different methods. But before I get into the video, I just want to talk about the rules of this challenge, I guess. The rules are very, very simple. I start with literally nothing. For example, if you got hacked or you got cleaned at the Duel Arena or something and you are starting afresh on your main account. So I will have stats as it is my main account. So I can use those stats to make money, but I will have no money to start. The G is allowed to buy and sell items to make it a bit easier. I'm not Iron Man in this. And I'm allowed to use the overloads I have in my bank, but I have to deposit GP for the overloads. And my goal is 200 mil in profit. So that doesn't include what I spend on supplies. That's the rules. So let's get into it. See if we can make that 200 mil. Starting off, I wanted to do daily runs. The first daily run I was going to do for some starting cash was go and make my runes with my Wicked Hood. So I reclaimed my Wicked Hood, went to the nature altar and made double natures with all of the essence inside the hood. I also withdrew some free runes. I withdrew air runes, but the best thing to actually withdraw is fire runes. So I made a little mistake there. Obviously, Double Natures does require 91 runecrafting, but you make similar GP if you did Double Cosmics at 59. So you can still do this at a lower level as well. Then I went and sold all of the runes on the GE and bought a Pack Yak Pouch. I now have a little bit of starting cash for shop runs, but not quite as much as I want. So I went to Taranwin, and just north of the Taranwin Lodestone, there is a Whiteberry Spawn. I made a video on this Whiteberry spawn, and every time I do a method, if I have a guide to that method, I'll leave it in the description. So I camped this Whiteberry spawn for a full inventory and a full yak. Then I went back to the GE to sell those Whiteberries to get that starting cash for shop runs. I now have 400k to spend at all of these different shops. First shop on my list is the Varrock Rune Store. Doesn't sell as many as some other stores, but 300 of the useful runes is still a nice bit of profit. The Magic Store in the Void Knight Outpost is amazing as it does have that 1000 of each rune and you can access it at any level. Then I went to the one on Lunar Isle. Obviously does require Lunar Diplomacy, but has a thousand of each rune and some extra ones like Souls that are big profit. I spent all my money, so I went and sold a decent amount of the runes. Although I did keep some of the elemental runes, as I'm going to use elemental runes to make some viswax in order to get some easy money. But that gave me 300 odd K back, and then I could go spend that on more runes. So I went to the Yanil Magic Guild, bought the runes in Yanil as well. I also went to the meat shop in Ooglog. This does require as a first resort, but the meat gives you a big amount of profit because the player owned farms. And Ooglog has the red sandstone right next to it. So I could mine the red sandstone and turn it into flasks. Potion flasks are big profit as well. So they're always worth doing as a daily if you're looking to make money. Same as crystal flasks. The crystal flex sandstone into crystal flasks isn't quite as much money. But it's still good to do each day for sure. I went and made Vizwax with just elemental runes. And just went between all of the cheap elemental runes that I've just bought. I just experimented with a couple of different ones until I got a good amount. I ended up settling on 72 Vizwax for all very cheap runes, which was lovely. Then it was time to sell everything that I had gained so far. But I did have a couple more shop runs to do after selling these items. I just need a bit more money for them. After selling everything, I'm sitting at 3.2 mil already. And it's literally been 15 minutes. Nice. Now that I have more money, I can spend the money on more expensive daily runs like Feathers of Mott. And I can make like 200k by buying those and selling them. They buy for about 1.5k, sell for 1.7. I also went to both of the herb shops and bought out the vial of water packs, the bomb vials, and just the random secondary ingredients. I went to the herb shop in Prif and in Tavoli. I also went to Codeine and got my daily logs from him. 
He gives you some elder and magic logs. The elder logs sell for a decent amount of money. Yak hide was updated fairly recently to give you yak hide packs as well, which is another way that you can make tons of money. Yak hide packs are like 500k profit, it's insane. And the last thing I'd done was go to the old man in the desert next to the cow fight hive, and he gave me potato cactus as I have the desert tasks done. And now after selling all the items from those daily runs, I'm sitting at nearly 5 mil. Those dailies took me about 40 minutes and I'm going to do runecrafting to take me to the two hour mark and then I will be able to buy a budget PVM setup and get cracking with some other methods. I bought some chronotes as I needed to change my relic power in order to get the runecrafting relics to teleport me into the middle of the abyss and so my pouches don't degrade. Again I have a guide on how to efficiently do runecrafting with the relics and stuff. I'll leave that in the description. I also had to make a gizmo and put mobile in it so that I could put mobile on an enhanced Excalibur offhand that I can reclaim from the Lady of the Lake. And I had to put some money in the bank for my Slayer Master Cape and stuff like that for an easy teleport to Edgeville Bank. And I bought some Pure S and whatever. And now I am ready to do runecrafting. One last thing that I wanted to buy was a phoenix necklace, as that helps a lot against PKers. It can save your life, definitely worth taking. And power burst of sorcery so I can make additional runes. I'm going to be making blood runes which are a tiny bit less GP an hour than nature's, but they're typically the go-to because they're better XP and stuff, so I don't mind losing out on a tiny bit of GP in order to do the most efficient rune. Because if you guys were going to do this, I definitely would advise blood runes over natures, even when you don't have much money. Then I just ran through the abyss for an hour and 20 minutes in order to take me to the two hour mark and give me a decent amount of starting money to get a PVM setup. I'm planning on making a budget PVM setup of like bandos and an elder rune two hander and stuff and this will get me there. Yes, you do need 77 runecrafting in order to do blood runes, but alternatively, you could do double cosmics at 59. That's a pretty low level, and they're still very amazing money. Cosmics are over 400 GP each, and double those at 59 means you can make a lot of money even at the mid runecrafting levels. A bit over an hour netted me with 16 mil. Runecrafting is just such crazy money, man. It's like 13, 14 mil an hour right now. Everything sold for pretty much GE price, and I got near enough 16 mil for it. Now it was time to buy a budget melee setup. Melee is probably the easiest one to get a budget setup of because you can use Elder Rune weaponry. So I bought Bandos for some cheap power armor. I bought an Elder Rune two-hander plus five, which is the equivalent to like a tier 87 two-hander. It's really strong. Then I bought a Ring of Fortune to go alongside all of that. I also went back to my player own house and reclaimed an Illuminated God book. It's only 150k and it's 100% worth it for the passive stats. And I bought some potions. I bought some supplies of the GE and like I said, I can use the overloads that I have as long as I give the GP value of them. So I valued holy overloads at 125k each, elder at 200k each, and replenishment potions at 20k each. So I bought 8 elder overloads and 10 replenishments and put the GP into the bank. Now I think it's time for some krill. I went to Anachronia and I activated my Totem of Intimidation. This means that I didn't have to get KC when going to fight Krill, which makes it much, much easier. This is the setup I'm going to be taking to Krill. Should be a pretty solid setup and I should be able to get fine kill times with all of this. We'll see how it goes, but I'm pretty sure it should be okay. And Soul Split should keep my HP up. I've got loads and loads and loads of potions and supplies. We should be absolutely ready to go. I went to the Glacial Cave to get the Stoner Jazz buff. It's only a couple of percent extra damage, but that should help a little bit. And then I headed to Krill. I retuned my PVM hub portal for 50k to go to Krill, and I've already got the totem active, so it's time to go instantly in there without having to get any KC. 
I'm probably going to sit at Krill for like an hour and a half, two hours, and see how much money we can make. If we can get a garb or a gown of subjugation, that would be some big money. So that's what we're aiming for mainly. But Krill will still give a decent amount in like Wines of Zamrak and some other passive stuff. So we'll just wait and see if we can get any big drops. And this makes it a bit more fun. Instead of just camping, you know, runecrafting or something for consistent money. It's a bit more enjoyable doing stuff with that like wow factor in drops and stuff. So what I'll try and do in this 24 hours is do some stuff that have like, I guess, a bit of RNG to them. And then other stuff that are consistent money, like the runecrafting, like bossing, like slayer, etc. So I'm just going to kill Krill over and over again and hopefully you'll see a couple of clips coming up of me getting excited over some drops. Ah, uh, War Priest, great, great. Ooh, God Sword Shard, that's good. Oh, that was actually very good. Wow. 11's new personal record <laughs> with an Elder Rune two-hander. It shows how long ago I done Krill. I done Krill so long ago that 11 seconds was my new personal record. Nice. Oh, is it only 1.2 mil? Is that the only one that didn't go up in price? No. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. 1.2 mil is still 1.2 mil. I can't get angry. I did a full hour at Krill, but I only got the hilt, so I wanted to do at least half an hour of another instance and try and get something else nice. There it is. There's the money. There's the money drop. We didn't need the hilt. We needed the gob. There we Thank you, game. That is so much money. How much is that? It's like 6 mil? 5.1 mil. Oh. 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 So one and a half hours at Krill netted me with the garb and the hilt and a decent amount of normal loot. Made a good like 10 mil, so that's not bad at all. I'm probably sitting at about 13 mil GP at the moment. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Barrows. Barrows is a decent amount of consistent GP from all the Barrows items. And if I can get an Amulet of the Forsaken, then I'm laughing. That would rocket me towards much better gear much quicker. Then I could go do some Slayer or something. So we're on our fourth hour right now. We're about three and a half hours into the grind. And we've made 30 mil. So we're pretty much on par with the 200 mil in 24 hours. But we need to make sure we keep it consistent. So I'm not going to stay at Barrows for too long. I'll probably stay here for maybe an hour, an hour and a half before moving on. Let's see if we can get something nice. Hopefully Barrows can pull us out some nice weapons or an amulet or something like that. Just going to go through Barrows and kill every single Barrows brother except for Linza. Linza's the only one that I won't be killing because it will take too long with this gear for sure. Dragon's Medallion is absolutely lovely for Barrows. allows you to teleport back here so easily. But now with PVM Hub, if you don't have Dragon's Medallion, you can just use the PVM Hub, which is quite nice. And our first Barrows chest is... 25k, okay. Well, that's not a good start. 162k in that one. Those runes, pretty good GP. That's much better. 152k and a Trisky. That's fine. Just don't keep giving me 20k ones. Two runes? But it's 118k. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> 192k? Man, the consistent money from Barrows isn't even that bad. You know how last time I said the consistent money isn't that bad? Yeah. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Let's go. 32k. And another. 54k. 147k. It's whenever you see those blood runes and stuff, man. Really adds to the price. Ooh, not bad at all. That's okay. Uh, Guthlin's Chain Skirt. It's like a mill. Nice. That's pretty good. Bank that one. Very nice. We got a drop after complaining. It always works. Another drop back to back. Hey, 28k. Woo. Lovely. Oh my god, no way. It worked. <laughs> way. Avalon the Forsaken. Easy game, dude. What do we buy? What do we upgrade? It actually worked. I've done so many Barrows runs before this 24-hour uh, challenge, and I didn't get an amulet. We went hundreds without it, and we got it at the perfect time. <laughs> I insta-sold for 37. Perfect. 
it was time to do some Slayer, but my Slayer task that I get given will decide what type of weapon I buy, because if it's an AoE task, I might get, you know, Nasuta's War Spear for AoE or something. But if it's a single target task, maybe Drygores are going to be better. Ooh, Laniakea noticed my cape, so I get to pick my task. I think I'm going to pick Ripper Demons. But I'm going to pick Demons, as they give you more of those than they do if you pick Ripper Demons. And I'm going to go do a Ripper Demon task, which means I can use my Enhanced Dark Light as my main hand and purchase an offhand Drygor. I've got enough money for an offhand Drygor with the money I got from the Amulet of the Forsaken. I'm just going to purchase whatever Drygor offhand is the cheapest, and that's the Rapier. So there we go. I've got an offhand Rapier. I can't buy a main hand yet, but it doesn't matter right now because I'm going to use the Enhanced Dark Light. Then after the task of the Ripper Demons, I should near enough be able to afford the main hand Drygor, and then I can go do like Gold Wars Dungeon 2 or something, and everything will be coming together. But that does mean I need to augment the offhand Drygor and put a perk on it. So I bought an augmenter, and I bought some stuff to disassemble into components, so then I can make a perk. I bought a couple of Elder Rune two-hand swords in order to get some components for gizmos, I also bought some Divine Charges, as, you know, augmented items are going to use up charge. And as I'm going to be making an Ancient Gizmo Shell, I do need to buy some Historic and Classic components. But you can buy those in just boxes off the GE, and it, you know, isn't too expensive just for a couple of Gizmos. Now that I can make a couple of Gizmos, I'm just going to go for Precise, or maybe even combo it with Genocidal if I can. And it shouldn't be too difficult to get. I did have to buy a Super Invention Potion and Mycelial Webbing to make a Extreme Invention pot though because you should always use an Extreme Invention when making perks. Using some historic components I bought off the GE, I'm going to go for Precise this way. 9 Historic got me, Precise 6 Genocidal, perfect. Alright, that's a great perk, really good for Slayer as well because it's comboed with Genocidal which gives you extra damage on Slayer tasks. Now it's time to go and kill those Ripper Demons, but before we do that, we need to make some binding contracts. As binding contracts will be where we make most of our GP from Rippers. It will cost me GP to make these binding contracts, but I'll make so much more money back. It costs two Hellfire Metals, two Blood of Orcus, some Spirit Shards, a pouch and a blue charm. Killing the Ripper Demons themselves makes it so you even out on blue charms spent and you can continuously make pouches. On average, a Ripper Demon gives you just over one blue charm a kill. So obviously in an ideal world or once you've killed enough, you're even out. Sometimes it might not be quite the case and you may get slightly less than you put in or slightly more. After buying all the materials, I just went to Amlod to make the pouches. Just made an inventory, took my beast of burden from my yak and made a second inventory every trip. Only took me a couple of minutes and I had enough to start. I spent all of the excess money I had after buying the Drygore and all the supplies and stuff in order to make some binding contracts. And I managed to make 75 for now. Once I've killed 75 rippers and got 75 of the pouches, I'll sell them. Then I can replenish my stock and do the rest of the task. Doing rivers was a little bit rocky to start. I was using a vamp aura, which helped, but I didn't have a vamp scrimshaw. I didn't have enough money left over to buy the vamp scrimshaw, so when I sell the pouches the first time round and come back here, I'm going to invest in a vamp scrimshaw. Even with full bandos, which is unaugmented, and then my offhand dry gore with my enhanced dark light, I was profiting about 20 mil an hour. As this task was 125 Ripper Demons and including time making the contracts and everything, it took me about 45 minutes to complete. So investing in a Vampirism Scrimshaw is a very good idea because it's only 1.3 mil an hour to upkeep and it helps you so much with your health. It's insane and it will minimize bank trips so you don't need to go get more sharks, etc. Rivers are such an amazing task because of how much money they give you on a consistent basis. The other stuff we've done, like Krill and Barrows, they gave us money, but they are RNG, right? Whereas this is 20 mil an hour every hour, even with this gear. When using my max gear on my main, I was getting nearly 30 mil an hour with this method, and I have a guide to it in the description if you're interested. But the fact we're pushing now into our seventh hour and we've made 
over 70 mil is insane. As you can see here, the materials for the pouches cost me 3 mil. And I ended up making nearly 12 mil from the pouches, which is near enough a 9 mil profit just from 75 kills on the pouches alone. That doesn't even include any of the normal drops. They're literally insane GP. Finishing up that task, I now have 14 mil in my cash stack and I need 22 mil for a dry gore mace. That's my goal. I want a main hand mace off and rapier so I can go do Vindicta. Time to get another task. My cape propped again. I'm about to eat some pizza, so I want an AFK task while I do so. So Soul Devourers is my task of choice. Keys to the crossing are 500k each right now, and it's very chill to do. So all I do is pop an aggro pop, put up protect from melee, have a decent AoE bar and go ham. Again, I have a guide and a loot video on Salawa Ux. If you're interested, I'll leave that in the description, just like the rest of the methods. How's that for money making, boys? We've already got a key to the crossing. Our pet picked up 450k for a key to the crossing. Hello, money. Thank you. We have 161 more, so I do need to go get my food. Back to back, keys to the crossing within literally four seconds of each other. I'll take those easy money towards the end of this task. Very, very nice. What's that, man? Another key to the crossing? I'll take that. Thank you very much, game. So we've had four keys to the cross in this task. That is nearly 500k a key, so nearly 2 mil in just keys in this task alone. Very good. 1.8 mil, we got some vital sparks and everything. And then we got the five keys in one task. That's so, so much money, man. 18.3 mil. We're getting there towards the dry gore. All right, let's go get another Slayer task and see what we get. Back to back to back cape procs. That's insane. 192 corrupted creatures. Let's go. Corrupted workers are a little bit safer than Salawa Ux, but a little bit less GP because you get slightly less kills an hour and stuff. But they're a bit more chill, especially with bad gear. There was times at Salawa Ux where I went fairly low on HP and it hasn't happened at all here. I was just finishing off my pizza, so I wanted another task that was AFK, so I forced these. Plus, it's a bit of variation. Good fun. I got given a new task, and it was the choice between demons and Ganodermic creatures. You're damn right I'm picking demons. Let's go, Rippers. Went and bought more of the supplies in order to make binding contracts. Made the binding contracts. Went to go kill Ripper demons, and obviously made loads of money from the pouches. That consistent 20 mil an hour is nuts. After selling everything from the river demons my cash stack is up to 35 mil the total money that i've made is up to 100 mil in just under nine hours that's over 10 mil an hour we're well ahead of the 200 mil in 24 hour goal we are halfway and nowhere near halfway our time so it's looking promising now it's time to buy a main hand Drygore mace to go with my offhand Drygore to go and test vindicta Vindicta can be some insane money, and it's not too bad of consistent money, but if I can get a lance or a crest, I'm rocketing my way towards 200 mil. I also bought an augmenter ready to augment the Drygore, and we are ready for our 10th hour. That will be the end of part one of the 24 hour challenge. We're halfway in our GP goal. Let's see if we can get our goal of 200 mil in 24 hours from scratch on our main. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. Give it a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content all related to RuneScape 3. The second part of this will be out in a couple of days. And until next time, see ya.